Good evening, everyone. Is it possible to start? It's seven.
good evening, everyone. I'm Masi Kiptele, the SRHR uh, Department Coordinator. Hope I'm audible enough for everyone. Okay, someone to okay to let me know I'm audible enough for everyone as we start the session today. The orientation and induction for new members. Very, very audible. Yeah, good evening. You, okay. are good evening. you are audible, but please, uh, on the background, there's a lot of kids making a lot of noise. Maybe you move far away from them. Okay, I will. <laughs> Okay, we are going to start the session with the word of prayer. Uh, let's pray. Thank you, Father Lord, because of this day you have been with us. You have guided us, O oh Lord, since we since we started this this process, O oh Lord, from cohort one and till now we are in cohort two, O oh Lord. We do pray, Father Lord, to make be, be with us even as we start on Tuesday our classes and our training, O oh Lord. May you be with us and you may guide us, O oh Lord, because you are mighty and everlasting. Today's session, I will put it onto your able hands, O oh Lord, that you may guide us, that you may help us, O oh Lord, that we may be successful, O oh Lord. I will pay this short testing I'm living in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, sorry for the background, uh, for the background noises. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give the overview of today's session, what we are going, what, what we are, what we expect, and what we are going to do, and for how for how long. Mm. So our coordinator, uh, okay, Katila is sharing the screen. Okay, uh, the, okay. From now, from nine, uh, from seven fifteen to seven twenty, we'll have welcoming remarks from me, and and I have already done it. It was just short and brief. From 7.20 to 7.35, we'll have the remarks from our governor, Lyons International District 441, Dr. Zilifa. Uh, he's also the legal advisor of, of our group, the Barrier Breakers Youth Initiative, Leo Club. From 7.35 to 7.45, we'll have the overview of Maria Blakers Youth Initiative from the service chairperson, Leo Joshua Olio. From 7.40 we'll have the BHMC speakers present. Okay, we'll have some of the speakers who have been asked to present. From 7.50 to 8, we'll have the remarks from 254 Youth Policy Cafe. Those are, they are our partners. Stella Mutuko will be representing them. Okay, we'll have eight, eight to eight. That will have keynote speak on SDG number three. That's where we are focusing on the training. Eight fifty to eight forty, we'll have the training overview discussion by one of us, uh, Leo Winnie. Eight forty to eight fifty, um, Leo Katile will. Okay, the, who is the director of BBY? will give us our remarks and talk about the competition, uh, the SRHR competition briefing. Okay, during the session, we'll have a competition. And then uh, after, at July, we'll have a competition, which will, okay, before we start the training, we'll group everyone into groups and then we'll work on a, on a topic, uh, a project. Katila will talk about that when 8.50, when, uh, when it reaches her time. And then 8.50 to 9, we'll have our questions, A or B, and closing the marks. Thank you. Um, let me invite Dr. Zulifa, the district, the, the, the Nairobi district governor, who is also our legal advisor, to, to give us his brief remarks. Thank you, Dr. Thank, thank you, Marcy. Uh, Leo President, um, Leo Raha, Leo's invited guests, a very good evening to all of you. Um, it it uh, feels so nice when I see the numbers ticking up 
that there are so many of us who are so motivated to learn, move forward and change our lives. And doesn't matter what day it is, even on a Sunday when we are all relaxing uh, and enjoying with our family and friends, there are others like us who would like to expound, enhance our knowledge and become better. I would like to share a quote with you from Helen Keller. She was blind and she motivated the lions to become the knights of the blind. And what she said that do not walk on the path which is already laid out. Go on a separate trail and create your own path so that you leave a legacy. That is what I see and I'm proud of the Leos and of BBYI. With everything we do, what you do, you are empowering, motivating, innovating the youth to become more able so that we can deal with the challenges of life in every aspect and become not only better humans, better citizens and better people. And this is so important in this challenging times that the more informed we are, the better we are able to deal with situations and make our life comfortable. And when we are comfortable, and when we move on, we can change lives of others so that we can alleviate the suffering of those who require. There is a hand out there which we give out because being a Leo, which is leadership, experience, and opportunity, you have taken up the opportunity to get the experience and develop into our future leaders. I feel proud not only as the district governor, but as your advisor from the courses, what you conduct, the empowerment you give to the youth. And we as Leo Club, uh, as Lions Club of Nairobi, Igiri, and from the entire district, we will support you in all your endeavors where we can, so that together we change lives. Let us enjoy this um, forum today and see what everybody has to input and come up with a, another good program and bond with another. I wish you all well, a very good evening and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ari, for that, Dr. Zulifa. Um, we now have our next speaker, Joshua, Joshua, who is going to talk on, over, uh, on the overview of Barrier Breakers Youth Initiative and what we usually do and what we are going to expect. Welcome, Joshua. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. And thank you, uh, Masi. Thank you for everybody joining. We are much happy that we are here today to join this orientation for, forum. I will not take much of your time, but I'll take you through a few of, of what you have been doing. Um, this training is organized by the Leo clubs of the BBYI, that's the Barrier Breakers Youth Initiative uh, under the leadership of the Leo Katile Rahab. So um, in this group, we have had trainings. Um, today we are doing a training for the uh, building health maternal and child um, training. So we have had uh, different trainings within different departments. That includes the career department. They have also done their trainings on interviews and their CVs. And so we are looking at now the health trainings. And uh, this group as it is, it was initially begun as a as, as youth initiative uh, for, that was looking at um, before having this being uh, the Barrier Breakers Youth Initiative. 
So it looked at um, issues on sustainable development goals. But then moving forward also, we have on ongoing membership of young people to really enroll with us. And I hope after this training, all of us are going to be able to get nurtured with knowledge and skills to join um, this um, voluntarily initiative with young people. So um, if you hear people call themselves LEO, LEO just stands for Leadership Experience Opportunity. So the young Leos, and allow me because the Lions governor was here, we will get into where we also be articulated as the Leos. Thank you and looking forward for a fruitful engagement with everybody for this um, training. And I hope as we are the 40 participants here, we will maintain the 100% participation in this training. Thank you and back to you, Mercy. Thank you, Joshua, for the overview. We are going to move to the next session, where we'll have where we'll have a remarks from as, as uh, one of the speakers, BHMC's BHMC, BHMC speaker, who is going to talk uh, talk more about that training. Hello, we can have the speaker Innocent to speak on behalf of the speakers. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you get to well. Uh, Maybe somebody just check with me if I'm audible enough. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Innocent Indeje uh, from Kakamega County, and I'm glad to be one of the speakers uh, or one of the facilitators during the entire session. I'm glad to be here, and uh, it's my hope that uh, this second cohort shall be empowered more than the first cohort. And it's my hope that uh, with the empowerment that we shall be uh, giving each other, we shall be uh, giving each other here, we shall be able to go out there to the society to just be in, uh, identify those problems and then be the sol uh, identify the, the, the solutions and then be the change, the change makers that we want, we always dreamt to be in our lives. Because in this world, uh, as for me, I usually say uh, one thing, there are two things I usually say. One is that uh, if we don't take up these spaces, we shall never get a, get, a, get an opportunity to do that. So it's either you take up or, uh, or in, in other terms, you invade an existing space or you invent your own space. And with that, I would like to uh, appreciate uh, Leo Katile's uh, idea and uh, energy and zeal to just bring out this initiative and uh, the gathering that we have here it means that it's an uh, it's 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 an innovation she has come up with and uh, with the young people here and even the adults that we have here it means this thing this movement this idea this initiative is very amazing and it is a very uh, impactful uh, position in the society so i believe as we go on throughout this session we shall be able to just identify the uh, initiative the different uh, problems or issues in the society and solve them effectively and uh, innovatively thank you so much i wouldn't want to say so much uh, i hope we shall engage we shall interact as we continue mm, i think that's what i can say for now thank you so much back to you Thank you, Innocent, on talking on the behalf of the speakers. Uh, we are now going to have the next speaker, who is our partner, the Youth Cafe Director, Stella Mdrugu. Kindly, Stella, you can unmute and put on your video. We see you. And then, since we have been partnering with you, we want to see you in, the, in life. You can unmute and turn on your camera. We see you. 
Welcome, Stella. Did you lose you? Hello, Marcy. Yes. Did we lose some communications? Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry. I think my Zoom on my laptop decided to kick me out. So uh, I'm joining on phone. Sorry for the two or so minutes <laughs> that I've lost while recollect, uh, reconnecting. So uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Katile, and the entire BBYI team for inviting us again to be part of this uh, second cohort training. And I'm congratulating everyone who secured the position to be a trainee in this year's uh, training deemed building a healthy mother and child and having a focus on sexual and reproductive health, my right. My name is Stella Motiko. I'm an economist by training. I'm a policy analyst. I'm passionate about policy issues on infrastructure, on social issues such as health, education, gender, youth, uh, et cetera. But for today, I'm joining in the capacity of a co-founder and director strategy and planning of 254 Youth Policy Cafe. Uh, we were part of the trainers that participated in the previous cohort training. So we're excited again to be part of this uh, year's uh, training. And just to give you a short overview of who we are, we are sort of a think and do tank formed by five policy analysts. And our mission is really championing the voices of youth and the youth agenda in public policy making process uh, in Kenya. So the founders, we are actually alumni of the Kenya Institute for Public Policy Research and Analysis, um, which is a parastatal in the State Department for Planning that guides the government in uh, policy design, policy implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. So for us, as we trained at Kipra, we realized often there's a gap in terms of youth uh, involvement in policy making process. Most of the times we don't see youth on the table when policies are being made. And when we see the youth on the table, it's usually more of a tokenized approach. It's more of someone wants to tick a box, then we had this number of youth participate in the policy, whether it is policy design or it's in the implementation, monitoring and evaluation. So for us, we thought this is a we, we, we have gained knowledge on how the policy making process is in Kenya, and we can be those youths who champion for more youth to be involved in this process. And how do we do this? We, 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 we facilitate and coordinate sharing of experiences, ideas, strategies on how to champion uh, youth voices um, in the policy formulation and implementation. And BBY, BBY YI is actually doing that by educating youth on uh, health issues, sexual and reproductive health rights issues. We are already building, building the capacity of the youth such that when you take them to the table on policy making process, they already understand what are the key policy issues um, uh, related to health. So uh, we work with partner institutions such as BBYI, and we are really excited to be part of this year's uh, training. Last year, our training focused on uh, female genital mutilation. We are talking about the different types of FGM. Why is it still uh, prevalent? What is the prevalence rate? The consequences of FGM, looking at different policies and legislative frameworks, um, 
related to uh, an FGM free country, and also discussing some of the opportunities we as youths who have been trained on these issues can actually intervene to ensure that we are getting to an FGM free country. Uh, the president um, signed to get in Kenya to be FGM free by 2022. So we can be part of that by trying to champion for policy implementation for, for change in our community towards ending FGM. So I'm congratulating the team that is uh, BBYI team for get, first for getting to a second cohort. And we are excited to see how this is going to evolve. We work with BBYI in terms of strategy thinking, thinking about how do we map uh, impact of the intervention the different programs by BBYI. So for us, seeing the cohort and how this is going to evolve over the years, it's a key area of interest for 254 Youth Policy Cafe. So I see, I've seen a significant change in the program um, where we have more partners. I think I have seen logos, about 10 logos. This translates to 10 organizations participating in this uh, cohort training, which then tells that this cohort is going to get more information from diverse institutions, and this is going to be growing. So by day, it's going to be growing. So again, this year's uh, cohort theme, sexual and reproductive health rights, is quite timely. Right now, a lot of the youths in our country, we struggle with accessing uh, youth-friendly and safe sexual reproductive and health services. We still struggle with teenage pregnancies. We struggle with unsafe abortion, et cetera. So these are issues that continue to be an issue within our society. So seeing this year's theme being around sexual and reproductive health rights, for us, that is really exciting. And it is such an opportune time. And it's really going to educate us as youth on how we can champion on uh, better policies around sexual and reproductive health. So I encourage the trainees uh, to really purpose to create time to attend all the sessions. I have participated in a couple of the sessions that we've facilitated. So I see the quality of information that is shared with the trainees, knowledge is power, and getting to attend such a training is an opportunity for you to deepen your knowledge on the different subject matters that are going to be discussed throughout um, the training. So I wish you all the best. And I cannot really wait to interact with all of you during the different uh, training sessions that 254 Youth Policy Cafe is going to be uh, facilitating. Back to you, moderator. Thank you, Stella, for the overview on 254 Youth Policy Cafe. Thank you. For, part, for accepting to be our partners on the second cohort. The cohort, I was among the cohort one and it was a very good a good session. It was interactive and we learned more. I know this the cohort two are lucky. We have a lot of organizations joining us and partnering with us. So cohort two ex expect more to learn, learn and get more trained. Okay, now we are going to get uh, to, our, to our next speaker who is Peter, Benson Kimani, UNDP economist, is is he is the quest speaker. Welcome, Kimani. Uh, welcome, Kimani. You can unmute and or, or if, uh, and even put your video on. We see you. I'll be putting my video on later on. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. It gives me great pleasure to join this evening on this second cohort of training for youth convened by uh, Breaking Barriers Youth Initiative. And uh, I'm Benson Kimani from UNDP Kenya Country Office. I'm the National Economist. And uh, as you might be aware, the UNDP mainly deals on peace, governance, 
and security, inclusive growth and structural transformation, environmental sustainability, climate change and resilience. Uh, the UNDP is the development arm of the UN system and it mainly seeks to foster people-centered development that seeks to balance environmental sustainability and uh, human development. And uh, this being a training session, bringing together a pool of mainly university students and uh, I think mainly people from academia, you might also be aware that uh, at the moment, development is trying to balance between how much progress you make and how much damage you do to the environment and the reinvestment to make sure that we attain environmental sustainability. So uh, lastly, uh, UNDP is also the integrator of the SDGs within the UN system. As you might be aware, we have the 17 SDGs and uh, the UN has various agencies acting on different goals, but uh, by and large, the UNDP is the integrator of that process. So if you allow me, I'll, I had uh, prepared some slides. I can try to share them on the screen and uh, just quickly run through them. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, you can see it. Okay, thank you very much. So I was asked by the presenters to prepare on fostering good health in Kenya. That's largely on SDG 3. So I'll just go very quickly. That's the outline of my presentation. It's a short one. We have the introduction to the SDGs, the main characteristics of the SDGs, the alignment of the of, of SDGs with the national development process, specifically SDG3 indicators in Kenya, the challenges and the emerging issues. So very quickly, you might be aware that uh, the sustainable development goals were agreed upon at the UN uh, in uh, 2015 and uh, the official uh, resolution is there on bullet one of uh, September 25th. We have 17 goals, 169 targets and 231 indicators. And uh, the agenda 2030 focuses on sustainable development. It is the culmination of various processes from uh, the Rio plus 20 summit that put in the uh, document that some of you might be aware that talked of the future that we want. So basically the SDGs are broadly collapsed into five areas, which we call the five P's, uh, which focus on uh, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. So the main characteristics of the SDGs, are uh, they are universal. That is the global girls are from that document that I mentioned, the world that we want. And they are applicable by universal, uh, universality. We mean they are applicable for both developing and developed countries. Previously, we had the Millennium Development Goals. Some of you, maybe economic students or human development students or whatever training you're in, you might have interacted with the Millennium Development Goals. And previously, the Millennium Development Goals were mainly for the developing countries because they came after the year 2000 when the world was looking towards eradicating pro, uh, poverty and ensuring that we close the gap between the rich and the poor. But the SDGs that came from 2015 are for all countries, developing and developed. Then second aspect is that they are indivisible, that they cannot be positioned in a hierarchical manner. So whether it's goal one or 17, we all assume they are all of equal value and equal importance to human development discourse. And finally, they are transformative. That in they intend to transform the current challenges 
into opportunities for growth for both countries and developed uh, for both countries and the world. Then uh, we move to, I just, instead of uh, listing the 17 goals, that would be homework for you to go and uh, look for those who are not familiar with them. But largely we, we, we group the SDGs into those five broad categories. So goal one to five, we call it the unfinished business of the MDGs. That is the carryover from the MDG period from 2000 to 2015. Then goal six to 11 are the new areas. Goal 12 to 15 is the green agenda, which is the cornerstone of the sustainable development goals. Then we have governance and peace and the means of implementation. Kindly look up and uh, familiarize yourself with the goals from one to 17. So very quickly, we move to SDG alignment because uh, as I've explained, the SDGs are global goals. So one of the things we might need to do as Kenya is to domesticate the goals or what we call localizing the goals. And so that hinges on how we either relate or align or customize the goals to connect with our national development processes. And some of you might be familiar with the vision 2030. I think it's taught in most, in a number of universities as a common cause. So we have the sustainable development goals on the left collapsed into the five pillars, the five P's that I mentioned earlier. And on the right is your Kenya Vision 2030, which has three, I'm, uh, some of you might be aware that it has three pillars. It has the economic pillar, it has the social pillar and the political pillar. So basically the economic pillar talks of trying to maintain a growth of 10% per annum because going by studies and students of economics who are here, you'll realize that if experiences from Southeast Asia have shown that if countries grow at 10% per annum over a period of 20 years, they are able to transform from a developing country to either a second world and the most successful ones, first world. And uh, I don't know if some of you and especially the students of economics here should be aware that uh, in 2014, Kenya transited from being an LDC, that is a least developed country and moved to a middle income country. So we are now a middle income country and we are trying to make sure by 2030, we even move to an upper middle income country because under middle income countries, we have upper middle income countries, we have middle middle income countries and we have lower middle income countries. And that is mainly guided by the per capita gross domestic product. Then we have the social pillar that seeks to have a just and cohesive society uh, where everybody is secure and uh, you know enjoying the pursuit of happiness in the ways that they choose. Then we have political pillar, an issue-based, people-centered and accountable political system. I think most of you are fairly young and you'll realize that if you read newspapers 20, 10, 20 years ago, the kind of political discourse compared to, to today, there has been a big change. I know some of you will say that the people are still the same, but you see people now discuss economic welfare, youth opportunities, employment, you know, infrastructure. So we've, since the vision was casted in 2008 to, to, to date, some of us have seen the change from tribal, parochial, backward politics to a bit more of issue-based. Because if you look at some of the leading candidates in the present uh, development uh, contest that is coming up in August, they tend to broadly bring out similar issues of how they intend to do. So whether it's a bottom approach uh, group or the other one, uh, uh, industries in every village, the message is largely the same. I think the operational issues is where they differ. And I think uh, the older people here will tell you that uh, that's been very good progress in terms of issue-based uh, political system. So very quickly to SDG three, so sustainable development goal three has uh, 13 global targets, but for Kenya, we are currently monitoring around nine of them. And so very quickly, I don't know whether I'll run through all of them, we have indicator 3.111, 
that is on maternal mortality, it's still very high at around 362 uh, deaths per 100,000 population. But then again, this figure is according to the 2014 figures, which uh, if there are any students of statistics here will say that these statistics are a bit, you can say old, but the reason is these statistics are drawn from the Kenya Demographic and Health Survey. The last time it was carried out was in 2014. We tried to have another one in 2017-18 because the common practice in global statistics practice is to ensure that you have new indicators every five years. But I think the next time the indicators were to be collected, it coincided with the, the repeat of the last election. And so for one reason or another, it didn't take place. So we have quite some statistics which are old, but we are using them. But the encouraging fact is that uh, the Kenya household uh, the Kenya Demographic and Health Survey is currently going on. The new one that will give us new indicators for 2022. It started on 17th March. It will be completed by 30th June. And I think three, four months later, we'll have very new indicators. But at present, that's how the indicators look like. You can see the number of uh, expectant women who attend at least uh, one antenatal care I mean, rose to 44.3% in 2011 to around 66%. So there's been progress there. And those who attend at least four clinics, I think rose from 33% in 2011 to around 50% in 2019. And we believe this has even gone higher by the time the 2022 statistics come out. Uh, the under five mortality is still not encouraging, around 52 deaths per 1,000 live births. That is as at 2014. But we believe that has changed. Some initial uh, and official statistics show that it's come down to around 30 something. But even this, we will have a new statistic in 2022. Then we have the proportion of births attended by skilled personnel in 2018 was around 70%. There's been very good progress on this. Previously, it was 61. But uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, Kenya's medical uh, infrastructure is one of the best in Eastern Central Africa. And from what the government of Kenya tells us is that they are able to handle up to 85% of births in, uh, in uh, institutions of, uh, of health. Unfortunately, uh, there is preference in some parts of this country to have a traditional birth attendance for reasons that are best known to those who seek those services. But the danger we always like to say is that uh, if you visit a traditional birth attendant, when a complication occurs, they are not able to handle what happens thereafter. And that's one of the contributors of uh, high maternal mortality. Because if you are in, a, in an institution of health, in a health institution, and a complication occurs and the institution has facilities, they are able to handle the secondary issues that have arisen from a birth. Then uh, indicator 3.31, uh, HIV incidence rate in Kenya was around 1.4 persons per 100,000. And uh, uh, that has decreased to around 1.3 and uh, seems to be rising again. These are statistics of 2017 and 2018 and we expect new statistics once again. But uh, the health practitioners are telling us that uh, especially the young generation, you need to take caution because uh, the reinfections seem to be rising. I think people are paying attention to other challenges as opposed to the ongoing pandemic that has been running for the last 30 years on HIV AIDS. Uh, then we have the indicator on tuberculosis as at uh, 2017, uh, the incidence was around 181 per 1,000. And uh, I think Kenya was one of the countries that benefited heavily from a, a global fund that tried to bring enhanced medication for tuberculosis because there was this resistant strain that had developed. Then uh, two more, three more indicators, uh, malaria incidence. As you might be aware, malaria is still a great killer. I think uh, we are still looking at uh, uh, around 99 uh, people per 1,000. 
still very high and acceptable in a country that is now a middle income. But we hope that has also changed with a strategy that changed from curative as opposed to healing the malaria, preventing the malaria, plus the, especially the issue of insecticide treated mosquito nets for population and mainly the under five and the expectant ladies. And we want to believe that will have changed. We can all be on the lookout for new statistics. An interesting one, which should uh, interest uh, this cohort of uh, trainees, the suicide mortality rate in Kenya uh, had risen significantly to nine persons per uh, a million. And uh, sorry, it should be, that should be 100,000. And uh, now it's down to around two persons by 2018. Still not encouraging, but uh, not too bad in terms of global comparison. Then uh, a very interesting one for you to note in your studies and uh, discourse that you hold, whether it's at the universities or elsewhere, uh, traffic injuries are becoming a, a great concern in Kenya. You can see the indicators there. Actually, Kenya is one of the most unsafe roads uh, in the world. And I think that's something that uh, we might need to look at. Then finally, there is the indicator on the health worker density and distribution in the country. We still have around 20 doctors per you know, 100,000 population, uh, 170 nurses. The dentist population is low. The pharmacist population is low. But uh, in terms of uh, a lower middle income country, I think globally we are assumed to be within uh, the number. But one of the interesting things to note in this statistic is that you might have 20 doctors per the recommended population, but as you move, there's what we call regional disparities. You find, might find the concentration is in urban areas. You know, Nairobi itself could just have 40 to 50% of all doctor populations. So as you go further into the hinterland and into the rural areas, you realize you can hardly find a doctor in as far as 50 kilometer radius. And so the statistic might look good at the global national level, but you move in uh, within the country and the situation is not very good. And especially with the devolution of uh, health services. So uh, let's move to some national challenges facing the attainment of uh, SDG3 is that I picked seven key ones. The first one being that health programs and especially reproductive health are heavily donor funded or donor dependent. And so anytime the donors delay their disbursement or change in policy, some of these uh, interventions suffer heavily. Uh, so especially reproductive health, HIV, AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis, and even some of the non-communicable diseases, in addition to a lot of our research on health is mainly funded by you know, donors. And uh, I think that that's an area that uh, needs improvement. We also have inadequate emergency services for delivery and uh, utilization of the existing antenatal services. That relates to what I mentioned that the country has capacity to hold up to 85% of uh, all births, but uh, we currently handling around 70. Then we've got a weak uh, emergency service system. I think most of you who live across the country will notice that the response time to pick a patient, whether it's in the village or from the house to uh, uh, a hospital is sometimes around two to three hours. And sometimes you find that uh, the worst can happen within that. That needs to be reduced to around 30 minutes. We need uh, emergency services need to be enhanced. Then we've got low capacity for emergency and disaster preparedness. I think you saw what happened during the COVID-19, one, two, three days later, and the economy seems to be shutting down because we are still not very well prepared in terms of emergency capacities. Then uh, another key challenge is low health insurance coverage in the country. One of the indicators of our uh, upper middle income or a developed country is the number of people who've got uh, health insurance. Because health insurance uh, first gives you access to medical uh, institutions and medical care. In addition, it saves you money 
when you get ill or a loved one or a significant one that you need to dig into your pocket. And sometimes we see wealth that a family or an individual has accumulated over a long time, being eroded once a loved one gets into a hospital or a medical condition. And you know, if it's an inpatient one, two, three weeks, we all know how the bills look like. And so you get knocked out. Then uh, I'm sure all of you understand that uh, there is very high cost of services in private institutions uh, as compared to the public institution. Another key challenge is the low investment in primary healthcare at local level. And thus you always, I'm sure you see a lot of relatives, friends and neighbors traveling far away or away from their locality to go and look for better healthcare, maybe in the next ward or the next sub-county or upwards, sometimes all the way to the county headquarters and sometimes to the region, because we've not invested very well at what we call the local health center facilities to be able to handle the primary healthcare. Then finally, I'd mentioned that the evolution of healthcare is still a, a challenge because uh, the health uh, professional systems are highly standardized. So when you sometimes amalgamate them to the 45, uh, sorry, 47 counties, there's a challenge on how to handle. And I'm sure you've had most of you, and some of you might be medics, uh, most of you are agitating for the health uh, practitioners and uh, professionals to be brought back to the national level, maybe for better standardization, remuneration, and uh, you know operational uh, efficiency. Then uh, some broad interventions in the health sector at the moment is uh, the key one is mainly trying to scale up the universal health coverage in all counties because this started as a pilot. Then the second one, and this has been brought forth by COVID-19, we need to strengthen the supply chain systems because I'm sure sometimes you hear that uh, drugs are needed in this place, but they are you know, going bad in the warehouses because the distribution system is not very good. And especially the family planning commodities. Then uh, another intervention that is, uh, that is going on is trying to advocate for sustainable financing of health programs from domestic resources. That is, we try to move away from being donor dependent on the health sector. Some of you might be aware that there is what we call the Abuja Declaration that talks about a country putting around 10% of its national domestic resources towards healthcare. Then finally, we have a education training, employment, and a appropriate deployment of health workers to address the human resource challenge that has been exacerbated by COVID-19. Uh, some of the emerging issues in healthcare are uh, quickly, you can just read for yourself. They emanate from reemergence of new diseases. Then uh, I'll just want to mention the second bullet. There is still a policy dilemma between do we focus on having a universal social insurance system or does the government continue funding health programs or do we have what is called a cost sharing model? And I think I want to throw it to the students here. Some of you can take advantage and try and advise us depending on uh, available literature, what are some of the best options? Because as you might be aware, even those from the well of countries are still debating. You remember Obamacare, then Trump trying to undo it. Even the United Kingdom has challenges with its uh, national insurance fund. The, the, the world is still, yet to come up with which is the best system. Then Cuba also has an interesting system that is funded from Exchequer, but I think Kenya is yet to learn which is the best or which one works best. So I think I'll end there and say thank you for listening and having me, Asante. Thank you so much, Benson. That was uh, great. I hope you are still internalizing that. As we wait back to Masi Masi, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much, our guest speaker. 
Mr. Benson Kimani uh, for that wonderful session on a briefing on SDGs. And I see uh, you have really given us an insight on where the participants can think on where they can they can have their topics coming from during our SRH competition at the end of the training. It was so great. Thank you so much. I also appreciate our governor Zilfka Mamunje for the wonderful speech he gave. I appreciate Stella Mutuku from 254 Youth Policy for the wonderful speech. And I also appreciate our one of our speakers, Innocent Idenja, and I appreciate Joshua Olio. Um, I really appreciate all the speakers who have, speak, who have spoke and it's really touching and I see we have something we can work as youth and we, we are challenged in one way or another. So I will welcome the next speaker who is Winnie Nyanduko will give us a brief on the whole training, how it will look like. Welcome so much Winnie Nyanduko. Hello, good evening, everyone. Nani We can yes, hear you. Yes. Okay, I'm Winnie Nyanduko, a member of the BBYI under the SRH department. And I was also a trainee in the first cohort. I'll request Mercy to kindly help me in sharing her screen. I'm unable to share mine at the moment. Katila will be sharing the screen. Okay. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, so we have a total of 33 sessions and uh, we'll be starting on 15th March to 5th, 5th uh, July. And uh, they'll be twice a week. That's on Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, the timing, they will be starting at 7 to 9 p.m. But in case of any changes on the time, communication will be made prior. So on our first session, we have uh, adolescents and uh, introduction to sexual reproductive health. And uh, though, so including LBQTI and the uh, youths living with disabilities, and our trainer will be Inaja Innocent, who's our programs coordinator, rural to urban to global organization, AMREF Health Africa. He also has uh, five years experience in educating on comprehensive reproductive health. And uh, session two, we'll have sexual abuse and teenage pregnancy. Our trainer will be Sheila Ukumbuni Salim, team lead the Youth for Sustainable Development Kiliki chapter. She's a youth advisor and a MHM champion with the Y Act Kiliki County chapter. She'll also take us through relationships, sexual abuse and sexual harassment. The speaker, okay, so in session two, we'll be having two speakers. That's Sheila and Leo Gift Ngina, who's a BBYI SRH ambassador, and also a social worker, author, and maternal health officer. And uh, session three, we'll be having Pedro Sande. I'm a SRH visits and the youth client providing adolescent services. Is a H S H R H ambassador and a youth peer facilitator with ten years of experience in S H R H. And Katile kindly let's move to session four. Okay, session four, sexual identity and orientation. Pedro Sande, SHRH ambassador, 
youth peer facilitator with 10 years of experience, is a director at Suso Cliffy County, volunteer at Visions Magnet Theater. And session five, sexually transmitted infections, and other trainer will be Dr. Majala Zawadi. Session six, Session six will be having urinary transmitted infections. Our trainer will be Dr. Flavia Ogutu. Session seven, foundations of maternal and, and child health care. The trainer will be Ngalula Donald, who is a nurse at KNH. Last one person at the Kenya Student and Novice Nurses. Session eight, menstruation cycle. Menstruation disorder. The trainer will be Joe Jaggi, who is a consultant OB, uh, La Paroscopic Surgeon, and uh, is also a founder of La Paroscopic Machine 9. Session 9 will be having family planning, healthy timing, and spacing of pregnancy. Our speaker will be Swabra Swale Break. She's an obstetrician, stroke gynecologist, and she's based in Mombasa. And she's also the co founder of Gyna, yeah, something. So, on session 10, week by week pregnancy, the trainer will be Linda, Linda Gitonga, member of Kenya Student and Novice Nurses. Sorry? Session 11. Sorry? Session 11, okay. we'll be having ovulation and pregnancy test and uh, fertility and premature menopause. The trainer will be Dr. Lorraine Muluka. She's a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. Session 12, we'll be having the concept of the family. The trainer will be Nick Omolo Obiero. He's a student nurse and a member of the Kenya Student and Novice Nurses. Session 13, gender-based violence. I uh, will be taken through by uni searching on Wonga. BSCN BS nurse, uh, she has 12 years experience, SGBV, RH, and HIV specialist. And uh, she's a team leader for Danish Refugee Council in Protection in Dadaab, Kenya. She's also a counselor. Then uh, session 14, introduction to alternative care. The trainer will be midwife at Zoo. Session 15, the dark history behind post female genital mutilation will be taken by Stella Ntuku. She's a member of the 254 Youth Policy Cafe. Oh, she's the director of the 254 Youth Policy Cafe. And then on session 16, nutrition of a pregnant woman. The trainer will be Ms. Purity Nguguna. She's a clinical nutritionist. Session 17, we'll be having two speakers. The first one will be danger science in pregnancy. The trainer will be Andri, a nurse, certified childbirth educator. She has love and passion of fighting against maternal and neonatal mortality. And then the second speaker will be Blessine Zitoro Ituen, who will be taking us through a plantation in pregnancy. And then session 18, we have diabetes, Rosalia Mokoro. She's a nurse in Isiolo County Hospital and a member of the Kenya Student and Novice. Session 19, cesarean sections, Dr. Lorraine Muluka, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. Session 20, natural labor and birth environment. The trainer will be Sabra Swale Break the obstetrician and gynecologist based in Mombasa. Then uh, session 21, postpartum care, which will also be, the trainer will also be Swale Break. 
session 22, first 100 days of a baby. The trainer will be Dr. Aino Awa George Stevens, I guess. And uh, is a youth sexual and reproductive health consultant, youth specialist for SCSE with uh, IPPF Africa. Africa. Financial Times Commission. Session 23, free term back. The trainer will be Dr. Martin Masharia. He's an obstetrician and gynecologist based at Kijabe Hospital. Session 24, breastfeeding and cup feeding. We'll have uh, two speakers. That's Kasim Lupau, who is a public health nutrition specialist, Pan Africa Care. Pan Africa, yeah. And uh, then we have Miss Christine M. Mari, who's a clinical nutritionist, lactation consultant. Session 25, nutrition during lactation. We'll be having two speakers, that's Kasim Lupau and Miss Christine M. Mari. And then session 26, infant and young child building. The speaker will be Ms. Njogu Grace, who is a diet therapist. Session 27, general principles of immunization, safe immunization and vaccination. The trainer will be Lucy Nyawira, SRH champion, peer educator, five years experience, project coordinator at the Safe Community Initiative. Session 28, HIV and AIDS, the speaker will be Joshua Ochien, member of the BBYI Sexual and Reproductive Health Department, and also a YP Health Advocate. Session 29, Introduction to Maternal Mental Health Care and Reaching Out for Support. The trainer will be Dr. Joyce Jebet, who is a midwife at your end. And then Session 30, Postpartum Blues, this trainer will be Reverend Beatrice Otieno, lecturer, PSU University, clinical psychologist. Session 31, Renatal Mood Disorder and Psychosis. The trainer will be Samuina Wangui, founder of the Postpartum Depression Kenya. She is perinatal. Oh, she is a perinatal mental health certified and continues to use her skills to support mothers and their families. And then session 32. Session 32, paternal mental. Okay, she'll be the same. A paternal, ma maternal mental health care interventions for improving maternal mental health. Reverend Beatrice Wachien, who's a lecturer at PC University. And then session 33, policymaking in maternal and child health care. The speaker will be Samantha Luceno, co-founder, 254 Youth Policy Cafe. And then the SRH group competitions. I guess the deadline for the competition will be on 12 July 2022. And then the graduation will be on Saturday, 17th July. The guest speaker and the venue will be communicated. And then I'd like you to take note of the following. Uh, the notes and recordings after the sessions, they'll be shared through the Google Classroom. I guess that you will receive the link over the same in your emails. And then finally, for you to get a certificate at the end of the training, you should have attended at least 75% of the sessions for you to get a certificate. Thanks for listening and I wish you all the best. Back to you, Marcy. Okay, thank you, Winnie. Um, now that's me, Masi Jale, who is how I've been, who I've been coordinating the session until now. Thank you, Winnie, for that, for the overview of the session.
we'll be sharing the or we'll be sharing the schedule the slides and also the recordings on the WhatsApp group and through your, all your emails, which you retain them. Um, on the competition part, Katila is going to talk about it. We'll have it on 12th July at the end of the, all the sessions. I had talked earlier about giving me of each group will have a topic and for a project, which we are going to do it from now when we are going for the training on Tuesday. We'll have the session, we'll have the project going on until the end where we have the, our main competition on 12th July. Welcome, Katila, on um, brief us on the competition and how we are going to go about it. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. I'll just share my video just shortly and then I put it off so that I can share the screen. So okay, I'm Katile. Uh, I hope everyone has seen me. So I'm Katile Mutuku, and I'll be taking you through the SRH competitions and guidelines that you will follow. So let me put my video off. So I hope everyone can see my screen. So <clears throat> what we'll do at the end of the training, we want we want as the participants to network, we want them to learn from one another. So we will be having a competition. So what will happen, we will group you into different groups. I think we have 62 registered participants. So that means we'll group you to six group, each group around 10 to 12 members. And then you will form your own WhatsApp group. And then I will now guide you on how the competition will be and the rules and the scoring of how it will be. So this will be an online competition on sexual reproductive health, maternal health, and newborn health challenges. And then we focus this to see how we can fight crises on challenges on SRH, on youth, pregnant girls, women, anything about sexual and reproductive health to both male and female. And then for the competition, we'll have a pitch, we'll have a plan and delivery, and maybe a budget that you'll work on. I'll just share a video which is, it doesn't have anything word, it's just like something on how you will pitch. So it is a silent video, a quick one. Just a minute. Okay, I can't find the video well, so I'll share it at the end of the session. So let me just continue sharing the screen and now the competition will be. It's just a pitch. So it's just a, a video now the pitch should look like. And then we have mandatory items that should be included during the competitions. That you will have just any topic that will come up, any project that will come up, which should be based on what we are talking about or anything related to reproductive health. And then the team will just research on stories, uh, something about anything related to sexual and reproductive health that you think it's a challenge in the community. And we are take, we are the speakers are talking about it. And then you can also think about maybe technology, those who are interested in maybe making apps, websites, anything, anything about social media posters, the way you launch your project to look like. And then we'll have, this is what we'll require during the, the pitch in the competition. We'll have a concept that is like a pitch for five minutes. I'll share the documents and the video now you will prepare your pitch. 
um, maybe a one page narrative abstract that is like you have a problem so you you just have like a one page document explaining on about something that is going on in the community and how you want to eradicate it for example fgm you identify maybe in kajado county there are high rates of fgm and this is why there are high, rate, high rates of fgm there and maybe you have a story of for a person, even if you just frame a story and yeah, and how you can change it. So it's like you explain everything about your pitch. And then maybe you can have a draft of a budget and how you can utilize it. And maybe a slice of technology. You know, nowadays, most of us are getting information through technology, the same way you're changing the training using Zoom. So we want to see maybe something that you have cap captured technology in your in your presentation and maybe your target communities will just like if you target Nairobi, Makweni, Kisi, Kisumu, those and those interior counties. So just have your project targeted to one community. And then for the teams, as you said, we'll group you to teams, maybe by Tuesday. And then you will use Google Classrooms and WhatsApp for our communication. So make sure you join the Google Classroom. We share the link through the email. And then in the teams, we'll have a maximum of 10 members. So that means we'll have one person who will be the project leader. We'll coordinate everything in the team. We'll have maybe a graphic designer or communication leader. Someone will be drafting everything that we discuss. And then maybe there will be people in your team who will be doing research about what you want to do and then the themes as i have said proper in your pitch you have to propose a problem that you are seeing in the community maybe you come up with three problems on certain topic like fgm you come up with three, three problems and then after you have the three problems you have to have solutions so you come up with three solutions to their problems and then now you see how that solution will bring a big, a big, big impact into the society. And then after that, this is how we will do the breakdown. We'll have the technology, so we'll have different judges from different, different parts. So we'll have technology, see how technology, what have you included in your presentation that is in a involved technology. So we'll have like 30 points for that. Community impact. So we'll have a judge will be facing on community to see how, how is it related to the community? How many people are you reaching it? How possible is it? And then we'll have now the presentation, maybe how you pitch, how your slides are, and then maybe your budget, how you do your work. And then we'll have the total team score. So we'll have 14 slides, the title that is your project name your mission the problem that you're trying to solve the solution the opportunity that you see and then for competition is this is where you you compare yourself we are having this idea how many other organizations are doing the same thing maybe you have three organizations how many organizations are doing something similar to what you want to do you have this and then you come and show us how is how which approaches will you use to reach out to members in the community maybe you come up with like four four approaches then after that you have other four advantages how how better is your idea among your approaches compared to other organizations that are doing the same then maybe the revenue model how will your group members be getting revenue um and yeah what is your target target number and how you reach out to that then, yeah, maybe your product, that is what I am saying, that is your project. How will you reach out to the people? How can you get revenue out of that? How will you not get revenue out of that? If you want to do it voluntary, it's okay. Uh, the traction is now, how many people are in your group? Let's say we are we are 10 members. You write, we have 10 members. This is the duration of time you want to take, and this is why we will take it. So you will have like divide your project into different. Maybe you want your project to take six months. So you have month one, month two, month three. This is what we do in month one, month two, month three. And then the roadmap, the same. 
month one, month two, month three, this is what you want to do in month. Obviously, if you're starting a project, you can't start a project month one. You love to have come up with ideas. Now that is the start, then the roadmap, what you want, and then financial plan, what you love. Then funding, funding asking, maybe we try to apply grants after that and see how we can implement your project. Then at the end of it all, you have maybe a slide for picture for every one of you. You will have their name and the, the part they were taking in your team, and then the contact. You have a project, maybe you call your project, like for us, BHMC. So your product is your program project is BHMC. Your email, your, your maybe Facebook, Twitter accounts. Well, maybe if you want to have a website and the contact number that people can use to reach out to you. So this is just I've trying to explain everything what will take place in all those contacts. So that is how the competition will look like. So this means that you, as a group, when you're grouped to a group, you are, you are given a certain group, come up with something that is happening in the community and you want to fight on it. But if it's possible, you can try to relate it to our topics that the speakers will be taking. So maybe if you are, you are, you want to fight maternal mortality now during that session on maybe labor, things to do CS, just be attentive and ask the speaker's question. I, we will share everything. So don't worry, I'll just give in a brief. And now from there, back to you, Marcy. Thank you, Katile, for the overview on the competition. Okay, now if you if you have any question, recommendation, or any other thing, you can now ask and then we'll clarify. Thank you. The platform is open. You can unmute and talk, or you can also chat in the box. Okay, Jeremiah will be sharing the guidelines of the slides on, on SDG number three. Um, the, or, uh, then in the, the sessions, we'll share them on the WhatsApp group afterwards, right now, even the recordings. Anything else we want to clarify? Okay, using Google Meet. Um, okay, what, what do you mean? Can we use Google Meet on on the meetings instead of Zoom? Since you can use WhatsApp, what uh, Google Meet sharing notes, you can share them through WhatsApp or through emails. Okay, I'll share the attendance list later, right now. Okay, we'll consider the Google Meet if the Zoom is not working for everyone, but we'll have to consult first. Okay. Yes, Katile. Oh, hello. I, I just forgot some something. So for those who will have projects that will they will have to do with something with technology. We will look, we are, we'll have mentors from April who will guide you working on the project. So if you want something to do with technology, we have like, I think four mentors who can guide you come up with something technologically wise. Oh, thank you for clarifying that. Okay, even on the sessions, we'll have a speaker speaking and we'll have also a coordinator from the BBY SRHR team 
who will be talking or who will be coordinating the session. So if you if you have a question in the middle of the section, you if you have the, the uh, a question in the middle of the session, you can ask on the chat box and he or she will be noting. Afterwards, the speaker will speak or will answer your questions when we start the sessions now. Mm -hmm. That was what I wanted to clarify. And the attendance list will be will be sent on the during the session. Kindly make sure that you you fill in the attendance list before the end of the session, for so that you may track those who are who are attending and those who are not attending. Uh huh. Since I I can see there are no more questions. Uh huh. Can we have a remarks from one of the cohort two participants talking something about how the orientation have been and the induction and the expectation on behalf of the rest of the team? And it will be gender equality. We'll have one male and one female. A volunteer from cohort two. You can raise up your hand and then. You can talk. We have we have Kriyan, so we'll have like um, three hands. I'm seeing the prop. Now we have four. Let us have those four. We'll start with the Kiprop, then Millicent, then you go to Ensnas, then lastly, Noy. Okay, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, I just have a reaction to actually a question which was raised by the, the presenter on SDGs. Uh, he asked a question, uh, which way should Kenya, which way should Kenya take uh, in as far as healthcare financing is concerned? Uh, personally, I feel should use the, the voluntary way then the tax best. I think uh, that will work best for, for Kenyans. Now that uh, currently there's actually the, the, the new act, which is actually amended, the, the new NHF amended act, which was done the other day. So that was basically put there to ensure that uh, we, get, we get a greater pool of people joining NHF. And uh, when you get a greater people joining NHF, that means uh, the pool will be bigger and uh, Needed to finance now healthcare in Kenya. Now, now we should now put more emphasis now on, on uh, quality of healthcare services. How do we ensure Kenyans get quality healthcare services now? So that should now be the question now. Thank you, thank you so much, Prop. Uh, thank you for that good and um, interactive um, response. Uh, we 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 really love to hear that from your own side, and thank you for that. Um, so next uh, is Millicent, why you are? Yes, Millicent. Yeah, so hi everyone. I hope you can all hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Yes, so uh, I'm really excited about this program and I'm really looking forward to what the program holds. Uh, my interest is on the issue on teenage pregnancy and how we can reduce the cases that are increasingly becoming too many in our country and young girls uh, education program is being interfered with. So I'm really looking forward to learning more on how that can be tackled and the issue of family planning and how we can help uh, generally women understand the whole aspect of contraceptives and uh, also the issue on STIs because you find that most people are ashamed of themselves when they find that they have an STI and are not able to go to the doctors. So I'm really looking forward to learn how to handle those issues and more. And I'm looking forward to the start of the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Millicent. Um, I'm glad that you have already started to preempt some of your expectations for this uh, cohort training. And uh, absolutely, by the end of this training, you'll be like, a professional in those key areas that you really want to learn. So thank you for that. Um, allow me call 
Esnaz Nyaramba. Yes. I hope I've, I've, I've really pronounced it well. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everyone. This is Esnaz Nyaramba from Young Women Democrats. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the organizers, uh, the, the entire team for the great work you're doing and for thinking of bringing us together to make it a success at the end of the day. Now, my first question is, we already have a lot of uh, teen pregnancy cases that has already touched every, each and every county in Kenya. And uh, most girls were left out. Uh, I think the majority did not even go to school. They do not have Now my main question is, what will happen to these girls after we've told them about uh, teen pregnancy and teen mothers? At the end of the day, how can they again come back? How can they bounce back? Uh, number two, some of them were infected with HIV and STIs. She's a teen mother, HIV positive, with several STIs, and they cannot even afford. Uh, how are we going to help them either afford the medication, uh, sometimes even afford the counseling sessions because she can be counseled for, uh, for HIV, but for teen pregnancy and STIs takes a process. And mostly uh, with STIs, people do fear and that stigma and uh, they feel like it's something that is bad to talk about. And then number three, uh, I know many people will be asking themselves, including me, Eco bundles. Am I going to be facilitated for this uh, training? What's going to happen? Am I going to use the bundles alone or do people are going to support us? So I know that is a question that has been many people's heads. And I'm going to so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, and it's um for, for some of the insights. Um, I think one of the key things is we have noted, we have taken notes of your key concerns. However, I would like to say that um, at this juncture, we are not able to, we are not at a capacity to, to really uh, reimburse your bundles rather. Um, however, that is noted. And uh, I think we will look into that for subsequent trainings. So uh, allow me give Noel, then then I'll talk to you about after Noel's uh, talks. Noel, gives your insights, please. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I'm very much excited to be part and parcel of this great team. And my area of interest mainly is concerning the steel bats. How can we counter or how can we reduce the rate at which the steel bus are happening in our country. What methodology are you going to apply? So mainly that is my point of concern and I'm very much excited to be part of this great team and I'm looking forward to share and to interact with each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Noel, for that. Oh, I see some hands. Wow, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to really intimidate us or intimidate anybody. Um, so I see Veronica is also um, putting an hand. Before I give Veronica a chance, and I hope Veronica is the last. Um, and and forgot to ask about this again. Will there be a certificate at the end of the training? Um, that's an expectation. I'm not going to answer that. Rather, I'll. Somebody will talk about that as we move on towards um, the training. But let me give Veronica, let this be the last chance. Vero, welcome. Yes, we can hear you, but you are breaking. Go ahead. Okay. So my concern is on the change of people's mindset concerning treatment of blood care. I hope it will be well discussed because many people outside here are afraid of treating medical health care and the ways in which they are treating the health care. Some of them are treated 
at the lowest level and also how can be improved their health to a better position like things do the nature of how they can be in a position of getting on a test card that is the, my point is on how to change their main state Thank you, thank you so much, Veronica. Um, I will also request that you write it on the chat box. Um, probably we we saw you are somehow having um, you are somehow breaking. So at this juncture, uh, allow me invite um. The BBYI has uh, leadership structures that are in place. And so uh, without them, we couldn't have this training today. Without them, we couldn't have the retention being done today. Without them, we couldn't plan for these trainings. So um, in as much as we have various departments, like this training is being held by the SRH department. So they have um, an executive uh, committee that really takes part in the day-to-day -day leadership roles for this initiative. So I will give the executive time today now to have some few remarks and so to deliberate on different issues to also share with us um, some of their few concerns that they may have for this training. And then Jacqueline, um, who is a member of the executive, will end the meeting for us. So, um, I don't know who is going to go first from the executive. Hello. Yes, yes, Winnie. I can hear you, but you're breaking. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. I am the certificate at the end of the training. I hope you Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Winnie. Hope I was clear enough. Yeah, you are clear enough. I got you right. So uh, I'm seeing somebody raising a hand. I don't know, is that an hand for now or Vero? Veronica? Is that an hand for now or, or you didn't know it? Okay. So um thank you. I'm seeing our concern is about changing people's mindset on seeking healthcare. And I think we're going to this training is going to be much better to look at some of this issues we are saying about seeking healthcare. So um we have the executive uh, with us here. And I want us to um, I need to annoy. give like time and, and, and then to the executive to really give us some words and give us some remarks for this training because uh, after this orientation, already we, we will have officially begun the training. So allow me to invite the executive for the BBYI. I, 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 will, I will have thought of... Um, Atile is uh, doing the, the moderation okay. for his team, but because Katile is also one of the moderators for today, I would like to give um, others also now to just, just unmute, Alafu, you tell us your name. You can even put a video if you wish, only if you wish, but then you tell us your name and what you do at the BBYI, what is your cadre, and then um, you will also be able to, to, to enlighten us more. Okay, hello, my name is Esther. Uh, let me turn on my camera. Guy, na nyuelo jachana. Don't so worry, don't worry. Hair. Don't worry. Yes. Don't worry. Don't I'm in the house. I'm in the house, so I was a bit relaxed. That's why my hair is like that. So my name is Esther Mwende. I'm the deputy service chairperson. I'm also the vice, vice president of Leo BBY Gigire. 
And what I want to say to you is that I'm so excited to meet all of the trainees for this cohort. And I hope we meet all your expectations. I've had your questions and I'm so happy that you're so eager. And I really hope that you shall meet your expectations. And at the end of the meeting, and the, at the end of the, of the training, you will be more knowledgeable. You will be more, you'll make a change in someone else's life through this information that we're going to share with you. And for the upcoming questions or interactions, we are here for you. Anything you need to make this training better and successful, we are here for you as executive. And um, I, really, I, I really hope for a successful cohort. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Esther Mwele. Um, any other person? Just feel free to mute, unmute and, uh, and just talk. Feel most welcome. Oh, Joshua, this just point out I was speaking on behalf of the executive committee, all of it. Thank oh, you. But that's, that's very fine. Um, that's very fine. Even though I just wanted to have uh, the executive talk, uh, just give, even just saying, hi, my name is Michelle. Uh, and, and what do I do at the BBYI? Just like that. Oh, I'm sorry to have used somebody's name. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you for that. So um, thank you for that. Um, I'm reminded they have, uh, okay. Some of them are not with us today, um, but I know they will join us in the training. So when they join us, we'll, we'll let you know so that when you have questions, you can always tap into them. I can always ask them questions, which to me, my name is Joshua Leo, as you see, and I am the BBYI service chairperson. And I coordinate all uh, the planning and coordination for activities within the BBYI initiatives. So um, I would like to call upon Jacqueline. Jacqueline, I would like to invite Jacqueline to I don't know. I don't know. Can we give a round of applause to Jacqueline? Just do a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Kilamutu using whatever gadget you're using, just give a thumbs up. Just give a thumbs up. Yes. Just give a thumbs up for yourself, for everyone. You can do it via chat box. Just give a thumbs up before I give Jacqueline this time. Just give a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Kilamutu. Kilamutu. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for it was a very, very um, good interactive session, orientation session. At this point of time, allow me to invite Jacqueline, who is going to do uh, for us the last bit of these discussions. Then we will we, we shall start meeting over and over as from 15th of, of this month. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um and, and for, for, for purpose of clarity, if you have problems, just inbox our face, our, just inbox as we are on WhatsApp. I am there, I call myself a Y advocate at that WhatsApp group. Just say what you want, just introduce yourself and tell me what is the problem. We'll get all your concerns. Right, Jacqueline, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joshua. My name is Leo Jacqueline Marwa, the BBY Sexual Reproductive Health Ambassador, the Leads Operator. Uh, I'm happy to be with you guys today. And I really want to congratulate all the trainees that have joined for, for today. May I take this opportunity to recognize the role played by a network of other organizations that have enabled us to have the BHMC cohort training too. We are very grateful, the District 411, a Lions Club, the Nimbo Limited, Decent Conversation, pan Africa, Stand Up, Shout Out, Vision Magnetic Theater Malindi, the 254Y, the 254 Youth Policy CAF, Kenya Students and Novice Nurses, Kilifi County Youth for Sustainable Development, at OBCG, bracket Instagram and the IPPFA Africa for partnering with us. 
I hope that you can still rely on you for continued as we as well as we put the different mechanism of networking into gear. I would also like to sincerely thank the organizers of the training, our director and Leo president, Leo Katile, the sexual reproductive, reproductive health coordinator, Leo Masi, all the SRH department team and all the BBY Leo club for ensuring that the little details and requirements were taken care of. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no secret that the training will be considered successfully through your active and we shall have an insightful interactive discussion and great chance to share the outcome at the end of the training. We are very grateful to you for taking off from your busy schedules to attend the training. So thank you so much for our 62B HMC cohort two trainees. I also thank all the participants who are there. Let us all go away from here with one mind that the best way to combat common problem is to work together as a team with the formation of this BHMC cohort two. We shall be able to reap more benefit from shared efforts within the newly born cohort two. In conclusion, I would like to thank all the 62 trainees and everyone in participating in the orientation session. If you have any additional question, feel free to address them to our SRH coordinator, Leo Massey, or any of any, any of the BBY members. With these few words, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and present duty for me to declare the training of BHMC cohort two officially open. Thank you for your precious time tonight. Bye and let us meet on Tuesday, 15th at 7 p.m. Thank you, Joshua. I wish we could give a round of applause for Jacqueline. I just want everybody to unmute so that we give that round of applause. Eh, msijifanye hivi. Eh, Jacqueline, aki, aki, ni kama ndiyo tunanza conversation. Wow, that's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, we need to listen to my angst. People giving out a round of applause for Jacqueline. Thanks, Ola. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Jacqueline, for that, for officially opening for us this cohort two training. And with that, uh, I would like to request a volunteer to pray for us for today's, uh, for the end of today's session. It was really nice having you guys. It was really, it has been a good uh, interaction with us. Wengine musitoke kabla tujaomba. Naona tu, naona. So we, we, we need to pray, somebody to pray for us, then we, then we can live at our own pleasure. Ama I can choose. Mutu mwenye ajaongea yao. Let me, let me look for somebody. Let me look for a male. Males muko wachache. Duncan. Duncan Muturi, will you be able to pray for us? Aki mwanza watu ni blue tick tu. Ntawalilia lakini. Musi ni blue tick, please. Let's pray. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Jen. Thank you, God, for the success that you've given us all through the meeting. And as it's launched officially, may you guide us all through. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Nice meeting you. Bye bye for now. Kutane on 15th, Tuesday.